It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to another amazing episode of the EdTech Mondays Nigeria show. I'm your host, Chinye Akpa, and it's good to have you back again. This month, we took you on a journey into the world of AI, where we evaluated the impact of artificial intelligence on education. We have explored the potential impact of artificial intelligence in improving learning outcomes or not. And we're excited to see how our platforms have been buzzing with interesting conversation, comments, and even questions on how users like you believe that artificial intelligence can transform learning or has transformed learning. Before we dive into a recap of all our conversations this month, let's hear from what some of our listeners and viewers have thought about our topic, evaluating the impact of artificial intelligence in education. We have a community member, Dr. Nubel Bariza from Port Harcourt. He shared the following. The question of whether there should be an age cap for introducing children to artificial intelligence is more about developmental appropriateness than setting a hard limit. Children's exposure to artificial intelligence should be guided by their cognitive development, ethical considerations, and by the specific ways AI is being used. AI-driven tools like educational apps and language learning assistants can be great for early engagements, provided they are safe, controlled, and used under supervision. Rather than a strict age cap, it is more about ensuring that the content, tools, and interactions with AI are age-appropriate, educational, and ethically sound. So this answers the question I asked last week on if users believe there should be age caps to artificial intelligence. Do we throw open the net and get everyone in? engaging, learning, and testing the waters? Or should we put it at a limit and say, maybe learners from a particular age or having a particular type of proficiency are allowed to use AI-backed tools or resources? So thank you so much, Dr. Nobel from Port Harcourt. So my listeners, what are your thoughts on introducing children and young people to artificial intelligence? How should EdTech innovators navigate concerns around age appropriateness and ethics? Just as Dr. Bariza from Port Harcourt mentioned, how do we sit down to co-create what some of these ethical or safeguarding considerations can be? Are there any ethical considerations? Do people who develop some of these educational solutions that we use know about this? And is there anybody or policy or recommendation that tries to enforce how people can use artificial intelligence for learning in Nigeria? We'd love to hear from you. Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message on 0703-165-0880. My question again, how should EdTech innovators navigate concerns around age and appropriateness and ethics when it comes to introducing artificial intelligence into their solutions? So we kicked off the conversations this month with Dr. Olumide Okubadejo, the product manager at Sabi, who spoke about the use of artificial intelligence in driving business intelligence for edtech startups and shared unique ways data can be collected, analyzed, and used for business growth. And one of the constraints we have here is that we always want to go and take these solutions from you know somewhere else in the world and they don't really scale to you know what we are doing here. But of course these are opportunities, right? Where do you have the most, you know, kids that need, you know, the tool that you're building? You can decide to plug in uh, data or AI tools into the existing database of why I can echo and jam and look at the distribution of students that are passing, what they're mm -hmm. feeling, what's happening. And then you can know who needs your um, tool more better that can be integrated into marketing tools. 
Um, there are many ways that you can look at it. Uh, one of the the things that I worked on uh, in Paris last year was, you know, um, a sh being able to tell a student what school fits them even before they apply. So you uh, want to go to maybe a school, but you want to also understand the way you learn your values. Is it integrated into you know the way the school operates and that was something that has been built so that we're built at the time. So the, the many ways that you can look at it. Those mock, I, I know that we're talking about personalized learning, but there are an avalanche of opportunities. A lot of people say this thing that uh, we have a data problem. We don't. We have uh, a strategy around which to utilize and curate the data that already exists. Right? And we don't have an existing strategy to say, hey, um, this is this is what a school stands for, and this is how we're going to structure that data. And of course, there has to be work there. Um, I was talking about I was talking to somebody. He was like, "Oh, um, things are artificial recognition. They didn't have data." I like, "You just need a strategy." I've known somebody who just put um, a camera, got permission, put a camera, and you know, a place of worship, and was able to get as much data as as they wanted. So. I don't think we have a data problem. I think that we just need to sit down and find a strategy around curating and structuring the data that already exists. When we engage Sodik Elusoji, the co-founder and CTO of SimbiBots, we were exposed to the fact that the common uses of artificial intelligence in education today, through large language models, are only a scratch of the surface to how much more artificial intelligence can do in education. Let's listen to him. We have still not even explored LLMs to the fullest. The right, so we're just doing the yes, basic. Yes, still on the wow. So I can give you an example of an Please interesting do. thing that could be possible, which we haven't tried to explore back then. So, uh, you know, when you're writing exams, we have, um, let's say, two major kinds of exams. Uh, we have the multi-choice questions and um, the, the, let me say, the written ones or the theory. So, multi-choice is very easy to score. You can use um, OCR or MR to, to um, grade those scores. But then when it comes to grading theory questions, they could be very difficult because they actually need humans, teachers, to go through mm -hmm. what you've written. So, with LLMs, you could actually grade written. You, you could grade essays, for instance. So, essays written by students. So, you could grade it. That is one of the ways that you can make life easier for oh, teacher. Cool. I... Following this, there was a pressing need to identify strategies to ensure that all teachers and learners in Nigeria are able to access the benefits of artificial intelligence regardless of their location. Because we are speaking about, you know, biases when it comes to the use of artificial intelligence. Are there biases with gender? Are there biases with level of education? Are there biases when it comes to the use of AI and how can we ensure that everyone anywhere regardless of what they teach and who they teach are able to use and access artificial intelligence models. Dr. Chika Yinka Banjo, the head of department computer science at the University of Lagos spoke about some initiatives in place to democratize access to artificial intelligence to teachers and learners across Nigeria, and also effective use cases for artificial intelligence in education. I particularly enjoyed this conversation. You want to listen to what she said? Like I said, we went to a school yesterday to educate them because we have this grant on AI in education. And we, we made sure that we reach the grassroots. Grassroots in sense of going to lower elementary, primary, secondary schools to let them understand and get the, the, the correct understanding. That's one thing. Educate them on what is AI. And then um, that's how we have to take them that memory learn from how we started to now. So that's how we've been reaching out. And the lab I have, we do some trainings, especially in August when Nigeria, when schools in Lagos are on um, holidays. So we usually do a free training on AI, robotics, uh, ETC. So that's what we do, just to support and see how a we can be. Another thing that we have not even explored in education using AI is administration. Mm. That's where a lot of work is. Yes, I agree. Repet repetitive jobs, mm -hmm. 
um, admission residents are coming in, if you see the lot, a lot of time it takes. Paperwork. Exactly. <laughs> I feel so, so, so imagine, I understand. Yeah, so imagine admission <laughs> process. You have already automated or written a model that will be able to choose the kind of people you need, use their, their credentials to select them, and not only um, academic credentials. They still look for um, extracurricular activities. Yes. The way they soft finish skills. is they give it top students. Mm. And your job there is not for you to select how many do you want. Mm. And you can still do that by query. Finally, we examined a teacher's point of view to artificial intelligence as with every other edtech stakeholder we had brought into the studio. Oluwatobi Babatunde, who is the head of the department, junior secondary school, at Holy Cross College, Ikoi, addressed concerns around AI taking teachers' jobs, students' misuse of AI, and teachers' attitudes to emerging learning technologies. Let's take a listen. So in managing that, I will um, encourage teachers, or like generally, that we can tell the students it's a tool for them to make use of as well, but then it's to broaden their mind, their minds rather, and it will help them to see how creative they can be. You know, when they ask the question using AI, it will take them away from what they could ever think of. And um, when they see that, it, it spores the interest in them. And then they're like, oh, really? So this thing can be done this way. So this can be done this way. So it's for us to encourage them. It's not for you not to use it. It's not that you are copying, yes, because if they don't have the orientation, it ends up becoming a copy and paste to work mm -hmm. for them. So to just let them know you don't need to copy it. Just look at the idea, look at what is being thrown to you and build yours. With all of this, I hope you have found a side on the divide to pick. Do you still think that artificial intelligence, AI, would take your job as a teacher? Do you still think that learners have something to worry about when we expose them to artificial intelligence. As an innovator, do you believe you're doing enough to take advantage of this new technology to build and make your learning tools and resources more interactive and engaging? And finally, are you building the right kinds of talent that can manipulate this new technology and make it accessible to everyone. Whatever side of the divide you lie, I'd love to hear from you. Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message to 0703-165-0809. Thank you so much to our amazing guests for joining us on the show and for sharing valuable insights and experiences that have added to our knowledge of AI in education. We received some more comments from you, our listeners. Let's hear what Chris Atogi from Ibadan had to say. I don't think it is proper to put a specific age for accessing AI because that could limit or hinder knowledge or progressive understanding of students. Ade Tomiwa from Lagos applauded, saying, I am thrilled to see the unique perspectives this show brings to education through the various speakers. Thank you for engaging us. And I'd like to say, Ade Tomiwa, thank you for always listening. And for you who hasn't sent us a message yet, what are you waiting for? Again, what side of the divide do you lie? Are you ready to embrace AI? Are we using AI to improve learning outcomes? Are we using it to see how much more work can be done? And are we building on the existing models to make learning more interactive and more able to improve learning outcomes in Nigeria? We'd love to hear from you. So are you curious about where all this conversation is taking place? Remember, it doesn't end here. We have an active community on Telegram and on WhatsApp where we continue to have conversation on every and any trend in education technology in Nigeria. Do you want to join this community? Simple. Search for EdTech Mondays Nigeria on WhatsApp or on Telegram to join our community. And if you know anyone who missed out on this 
four week long interesting conversation very easy refer them to spotify edtech mondays nigeria or youtube cc hub africa to watch the videos and get insights from all the interesting conversations until i come your way same time next week where we'll be beaming our edtech spotlight on another interesting trend in edtech i remain your host chinye luapa and it's bye for now EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub.